Greetings from Terry at D-Lab. Today I want to show you a really cool, very rare receiver that I picked up at a local swap meet. It's a Lafayette LRC 130 receiver. Here's the paperwork. Very vintage, huh? Pretty cool. This thing covers 88 to 108 megahertz approximately, AM and FM. I tried to look this thing up. There's nothing out there on internet land, people. So I'm putting this video out so maybe some of you can respond and tell me any stories or any information you know about it, okay? I'm assuming it's made in the 50s. It's a kit that was offered by Lafayette back in the day. And uh, let me show you it, show you what I know about it, and then we'll go from there. So here's a front panel. And as you can see, unfortunately, somebody in the past drilled this beautiful hole here. Who knows what it was for? Um, there's the frequency coverage. There's a power switch, all that good stuff, volume. And here, there should be, if you can tell, it used to say Lafayette right on it, but somebody deliberately painted over it. I can't tell you why. Other than that, she's stock. All right, first off, you can see here I've got the original sales flyer and the kit manual here. The kit manual is pretty cool. It's all there. It's got the schematic of this thing. Lafayette Radio Corporation. Classic. Okay, here we are top side. You can see she utilizes uh, seven tubes. Got a bulge regulator, 5Y3 rectifier, 6J5 output. And what's really kind of neat is these IF cans made by Karen. I'm not sure uh, who they were. Maybe there's some history behind them that I'm not aware of. The only bummer I noticed is the tuning capacitor. Um, if you get in here, I don't know if you can see it, but when I, when I turn the knob here, okay, I'm turning the tuning knob, this first coupler right down in here, set screws become disengaged. So only the first section of the tuning cap is turning. And I'm not sure how to get in there to reset the uh, set screw. Got three of these little crazy 900 series tubes kind of sitting down there. Uh, I have no idea how you could ever change those things out either. So, this thing was uh, quite the uh, project back in the day. A lot of engineering went into it. You can see she's very well built, still has the old original caps in here. Now, down here, somebody added this guy. Okay, obviously, the filter cap must have went bad. So somebody did a lovely substitution job, okay? Other than that, it looks pretty much untouched. Here we are backside. Here's your uh, antenna input. Looks like a little ground clip here, possibly. Power cord has a little bit of uh, dry rot here, but it is the original cord that was on it back in the day. This thing is really well built. I just wish I knew more about it. All right, so one thing I did want to point out is I did bring the receiver up on a variac, and it does power up, and it's not drawing excessive current. So right now, it is in restorable condition. I picked this up from the original owner's pre-estate. He's in a nursing home. This guy was 94 years old, and he built this kit. This isn't some uh, ham fest or eBay special. Okay. So before I let it go down the road, I would like some more information. So if anybody out there has anything that you could contribute, I would greatly appreciate it. I like to put on videos of rare, unique type radios, uh, and this is one, I believe. It may be so rare that maybe they just didn't sell, okay? It may be a, one of those pig and a pokes, right? But it may be something that some museum says, man, we got to have that on the shelf. I don't know. But I just wanted to show you so everybody can see another piece of history by D-Lab Electronics. Thanks for watching.